so you're looking for some compression couldn't be easier you know straightforward uh, peak limiter the Yuri 1176 also known as the Universal Audio 1176 designed by Bill Putnam it was uh, I think it came out in the late 60s maybe 1968 and it, it was the first true peak limiter that used solid state so no valves no tubes and um, fairly simple we'll, we'll go through it step by step we've got an input an output attack and release times and how much you're going to compress okay so usually on compressors more modern compressors you'll find something that's called the threshold which tells you where you're going to compress so whenever a signal goes higher than the threshold that's where you want to start squeezing so you know if, if you're singing really quiet parts and then suddenly ah, you explode you want to contain that a little bit in your mixes because otherwise your levels are going to be everywhere so uh, this doesn't have that threshold you achieve that with the input so if you want more compression you just increase the input if you want less you take the input down you'll see your gain reduction meter will start moving less you'll have to make up your gain with that one a little bit so input level output level attack time release time now usually attack time on more modern compressors is that way very very fast and that way very slow same with the release fast release slow release now on the 1176 it's the other way around okay so the way this is set is the slowest possible attack we go all the way clockwise so it'll be the fastest attack same with the release slow release fast release and then ratios is basically how much you want to squeeze so once you hit that threshold where it starts compressing you know four to one it's kind of gentle compression so you know for four db coming in one's going to come out eight coming in one's going to come out so you're compressing more all the way to 20 which is heavy compression or limiting you know it's like that's it you're not going any further than that so you know for 20 coming in one coming out it's a lot of a lot of squeeze these are workhorses you'll see these in every studio this, this this is a huge part of the sound from you know from the late 60s up to now you know most hit records that you find will have these or some version of these on it you know that this this is the sort of the go-to compressor of a lot of engineers and producers um, so what I've done here on uh, the vocal is I've daisy chained two of them together so that I don't have to compress uh, that much on one unit it's always always seems to work a lot nicer if you do a little squeeze on several units rather than use one to just <coughs> slam everything down so and because this guy is compressing in the first stage it's going to make the behavior of the next one in the chain slightly different rather than one box trying to do everything and it might be just too much for it to handle it sonically and it's going to change the sound so if you squeeze a little bit on a couple of units it's it's probably going to help matters a little bit so what we've got here is of setting this one to eight which is quite a bit of squeeze and I'm going to set it at a fairly fast attack. Oh yeah, one thing I should mention as well, the older units, they have this click off position, which means that it's not compressing, but you're still going through the circuit, so you get the actual sound, the character of the unit. So sometimes it's quite nice to just have it off, and you'll notice, you know, without it, with it, it sounds quite different. So we're going to compress just the peaks. We're going to look look at where the vocal jumps out, and we're just going to grab those loud peaks a little bit with a fairly fast release time. So it's just kind of it's 
going to grab them and leave them alone. And it'll give the next compressor, who's going to be a lot more gentle, it's going to, you know, sort of move in time with the music. It's going to let that one work a lot less, because otherwise, like, oh, a peak, uh, and it's not coming back in time for the next word. So taking the peaks off with this one, and then with this one, we're just going to do a general kind of level compression. So it's going to be a gentler slope, 4 to 1, gentler amount of compression. And we're going to go probably a little bit slower. Actually, let's go to uh, let's go to this funky setting, which uh, seems to have made its way into the industry as a standard setting. You know, there's no golden rules. There's no oh, you can't do this. You know, if it works, it works. But this setting here has found its way into the industry as a bit of a, a known setting. It's called the Dr. Pepper setting. So, I mean, I, I was too young, but, you know, I found this out by accident. There was a Dr. Pepper advert that said you have to have a Dr. Pepper at 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock, and 4 o'clock. Attack setting, 10 o'clock. Release setting, 2 o'clock, and 4 o'clock on the ratio. That's the Dr. Pepper setting. So it's a it's a fairly slow attack, but it's going to let the transients through. So, you know, you, you don't want to kill the dynamic of a performance. So if you're going to squeeze everything out, it, it's just going to sound like that, and it's not going to do anything. If you let the attack through, things are going to breed. You're going to, you know, if, if, if there's a performance that, you know, has a bit of aggression, so they're going to go, bah! It's going to happen, it's going to come across. So you're not going to squeeze the life out of it. And then a gentle release, not too fast, not too slow. And those two together work really well. So we'll have a listen to um, the vocal by itself with everything Asked out. You know, we've bypassed it on the desk, shadow. it's not patched in. We're going to have a listen to, to that. Worm gets burnt, it's dark below. Then Still we'll patch the everything in, again. and we'll have a listen with it in if I catch with just our little settings. You can see this guy is just grabbing the peaks. There you go, and this guy is just gently compressing, which gives you the ability to have a quite intimate in your face vocal so if you're doing you know pop and, and rock and stuff it's quite gives you the ability to push the vocal quite forward and it'll just pop out so you know we can we can reduce these guys a little bit there we go so he's just grabbing the peaks and he's just gently compressing away all the way which will allow you to bring the vocal nice to the forefront the UAD plugins, they've got these guys modeled and they've got all the different redesigns and incarnations as plugins. And, you know, obviously this is this is one of their units. So if, if their plugins are not going to sound the way these guys do, but they do. I mean, they, they are so close, so similar. Um, not much to say, really. Um, you know, UAD 1176 sounds like the real deal um, but again you know th there's something about sticking something through a box have the electronics interact with your signal and it's it's going to it's going to sound different yet you know and, and you know you can go crazy on it you can drive it into a distortion if you want to create that sound you know if you want something to sound like a guitar or something you want something cranky just drive the hell out of it, turn the uh, output down, and see what happens. Experiment and have fun. It's got 